Hey, what's up everybody? This is Keegan here and welcome back to the channel. I am back with a brand new video for you guys and welcome back to another edition of Keegan's Movie Reviews. And today I'm going to be reviewing two movies this time around. Now, in my last review that I did two weeks ago when I reviewed The Northmen and Inland Empire, at the end of the video I said I was going to be reviewing the two movies that I'm going to be reviewing in today's episode next. Well, if you read the title and seen the thumbnail for this video, or if you've seen my last review, you know what movies I'm going to be reviewing today. And the two movies I'm going to be reviewing today are Blue Velvet and Mulholland Drive, which both of these movies were written and directed by David Lynch. And in my last review, when I reviewed Inland Empire and The Northmen, I reviewed Inland Empire, which was written and directed by uh, David Lynch. So anyways, let's take a dive into these two movies, shall we? So, we're going to start this review off with Blue Velvet, which is a crime, drama, thriller, mystery, noir movie, which, like I said at the beginning, was written and directed by David Lynch, and it was released on September 19th, 1986. And I actually re-watched re this movie a little while ago, well, back in April, because it's been a long time since I first watched it, which the first time I watched this movie was back in 2019 when I was 17 at the time and I was still in high school during my final year in high school. And I remember the first time I watched the movie, I was blown away by it. And I forgot to say that it should be a good time saying that Blue Velvet was the first David Lynch movie I ever watched. And I remember when I first watched it, I was blown away by it and was really fascinated by it. And it introduced me to uh, David Lynch. But uh, yeah, so without further ado, I'm going to go into the storyline of the movie in a spoiler-free way. And then I will give my thoughts on the movie. So let's take a dive into Blue Velvet. So Blue Velvet follows a college student named Jeffrey Beaumont, who was played by Kyle MacLachlan. Who, um, which Jeffrey returns to his hometown after his father suffers from a stroke at the very beginning of the movie after the opening credits. And, um, uh, he is, uh, his father's recovering in the hospital, so he comes home to visit his, uh, father and his mother and grandmother who are staying at his parents' house. And, uh, he just, and Jeffrey, uh, is here to take care of things while his father recovers. When one day, while on a walk, Jeffrey discovers a severed ear in the middle of the ground somewhere in the forest. And then he gets the police to investigate the ear, but are unable to figure out where it came from, even though it was uh, came from somebody. And then Jeffrey decides to investigate the matter on him, on his own with the help of the the police, the police chief's daughter named Sandy, who was played by Laura Dern, which this was Laura Dern's first collaboration with David Lynch. And then Sandy and uh, Jeffrey find out that, learn that there was a nightclub singer named Dorothy, played by Isabella Rosalini, who may have a connection to the missing ear. So then they uh, sneak in. So while well, Jeffrey sneaks into um, sneaks into um, Dorothy's house one night, and is caught by uh, is caught by Dorothy. He then finds out that Dorothy isn't the person responsible for the missing ear. It was actually responsible for a uh, a psychopathic drug addict mobster named. Frank, played by the late Dennis Hopper, who does a phenomenal job as uh, the main antagonist. And Jeffrey tries to bring down Frank and all the mobsters ne that surround him and try to free uh, Dorothy from being, from being Frank's sex slave. And to make matters worse, Frank has Dorothy's husband and son held captive. And they're held hostage, so Dorothy will continue to be uh, Frank's sex slave. And that's basically the storyline of the movie in a nutshell, in a spoiler freeway. Now I'm going to get my thoughts on it. Now, at the beginning of this video, like I said before, 
I first watched this movie back in February of 2019, and at the time I was 17 and still in high school, in my final year of high school, that is. And uh, I was blown away by this movie. I was really fascinated by this movie the first time I watched it. I thought it was really weird, really unique, and really surreal. And this was the movie that introduced me to David Lynch. And uh, it was definitely not exactly what I was expecting when I first uh, watched this movie. The first time I watched it, I watched it knowing little about it as possible. And um, I recently watched this movie again a little while ago, back in April, so uh, like nearly two months ago. And after watching it a second time, I liked it even, I still like this, I still really, really like this movie, and I now consider it one of my all-time favorite movies. It's a really, really fantastic film. I know a lot of people regard it as a classic, and believe me, it is a classic. It's very weird, very strange, and... Uh, very uh, very well written and well acted in a very uh, well made film. It's arguably one of uh, David Lynch's best movies, either this one or Mulholland Drive, which we will get to in a bit. Some people argue that this one, that Blue Velvet is uh, David Lynch's best movies, while some argue that Mulholland Drive is more superior. Well, we'll get to Mulholland Drive in a minute, but... I really, really enjoyed this movie, even after a second viewing. I think this is now one of my all-time favorite movies. It's just a fantastic film, and all the performances in this movie are really, really, uh, are really, we really, really well done. Especially um, Dennis Hopper, who played the main villain Frank, and I must say Frank is one of the best villains from any movie that I've seen. Well, a lot of David Lynch movies have interesting villains like. Mystery Man from Lost Highway, which I will probably do a review on someday, and a couple of other stuff. And uh, yeah, rest in peace, Dennis Hopper, and uh, also rest in peace, Dean Stockwell, who also co-starred in this movie. He passed away back in, I believe it was November or something. Yeah, he passed away a couple months ago, so uh, rest in peace, Dean Stockwell. But uh, yeah, I really, really enjoyed Blue Velvet, especially after a second watch. It's now one of my all-time favorite movies, and it's definitely one of uh, Lynch's best movies, or maybe my favorite L movie from Lynch. But um, yeah, so I'm going to give Blue Velvet a 9 out of 10. Now we move on to Mulholland Drive, which was once again written and directed by David Lynch, and... This is a mystery thriller drama, and it was released in America on October 19th, 2001, and then released in Canada on October 26th, 2001, which the release date in Canada was the same day when Donnie Darko was released, which is one of my all-time favorite movies, and uh, yeah. Now, the interesting thing about Mulholland Drive is that this movie originally started out as a pilot for a TV show that never really got anywhere and was rejected by NBC, so David Lynch add, added a couple more scenes to it and then turned it into a 147-minute long movie. And I actually recently watched this movie for the second time three weeks ago. The day before I saw Inland Empire, when I saw that one in theaters. I mentioned this in my review of Inland Empire that I uploaded two weeks ago. So, uh, yeah, I said in that video, I uh, rewatched that movie the day before I saw Inland Empire. And um, the first time I watched it was uh, back in July of, uh, well, I guess you could say almost last year. And I really, really enjoyed it. My the first time I watched it, and I really, really enjoyed it the second time I watched it. Well, we'll get to my thoughts on it a little later, but right now, let's get into the storyline of the movie in a spoiler-free way in a nutshell. So now, let's dive into Mulholland Drive. So, Mulholland Drive follows an amnesiac woman named Rita, who is played by Laura Herring, who, at the very beginning of the movie, gets into a car accident after the, lim the limo she was in she was uh, being held at a gunpoint, but when a group of kids crash into the limo, killing the two people in the limo except for her, however, she loses her memory in the accident, 
and she hides out in a in a condo where our other main character will appear in and our other main character in this movie is named Betty played by Naomi Watts a Canadian woman who comes to Los Angeles to pursue her acting career who um stays in the condo where Rita was hiding which was actually belonged to her aunt and then when she arrives she sees a uh, Rita hiding in the shower, or just taking a shower, but she thought it was a friend, but doesn't know that, but her aunt doesn't know anyone named uh, Rita, and they try to figure out what happened to uh, Rita, and try to make Rita remember, I mean, get her memory back, like, what happened the night before, like, the night of the accident. And throughout the film, there's a lot of different characters in the movie, like a director named Adam, played by Justin Thoreau. Thoreau? I have no idea how you pronounce his last name. You might know him from uh, Six Feet Under. He was in, uh, uh, he was that guy with the, uh, I think he was like a saxophone player or something in Six Feet Under in season four. I forgot his name, but. He was in that show. He was also in um, Inland Empire, which I reviewed in my last uh, movie review. But anyways, Adam uh, has like a really bad day. Like he's like having dispute at his uh, at the studio he works with, and his wife cheats on him, and stuff like that. And there's a lot of weird characters in this movie, and. It's kind of hard to tell because this movie really plays with your head. Well, I don't really want to spoil too much, but that's basically the best I can describe the storyline without giving away too much. So now for my thoughts on this movie. Now, when I first watched Mulholland Drive, and I know I'm not alone on saying this, but I didn't really quite understand the movie like halfway through the movie it gets really confusing but I still really really enjoyed the movie the first time I watched it and I still don't really get it on the second viewing but I still I uh, really really enjoyed the movie I think this movie is fantastic it really brings on the, the whole debate of whether you can enjoy art even if you don't understand the art piece I think I mentioned this in my last review when I got to Inland Empire in my last review, that whole debate. But, yeah, I did, actually. Um, I believe you can enjoy art, even if you don't understand the art piece. But I, that's how I feel about this movie. This movie is really, really surreal. It is very confusing halfway through the movie. It kind of messes with your head. It's a very weird, very surreal, very polarizing movie. And I really, really enjoyed it. I think this movie is fantastic. And I really do like the score for this movie, which was done by Angelo... Uh, what was his name? Hold on, what was his name? I had to get my Blu-ray copy of this movie because I couldn't remember the name of the composer. Uh, the music was done by Angelo ba Badalamenti. I think that's how you say his name. Yeah, he did a really good job on the score for this movie. I forgot to mention I really enjoyed the score in uh, Blue Velvet as well. And uh, I really, really enjoyed this movie. I really like the set designs. I really like the uh, the performances. And it's a very weird movie, but I really, really enjoyed it. And I think this movie was also really well casted. Naomi Watts was great in this movie. Same with uh, Justin Thoreau. Thoreau? Yeah, Justin Thera, I think that's how you say his name. And uh, Laura Herring was great in this movie. And uh, same with uh, Rob... I forgot his name. Robert Forrester, yeah, he was in this movie too. He was really great. He was also in uh, Inland Empire. He was in this movie too. May he rest in peace. But uh, I really, really enjoyed Mulholland Drive. It's uh, definitely not a movie for everybody. But if you're a fan of David Lynch, I think you'd love this movie. I know some debate that either this movie or Blue Velvet is his best movie. 
Um, I can't decide which movie's more superior. I really do enjoy both, but I guess I'd say I like Blue Velvet a little more. But I still really, really enjoyed uh, Mulholland Drive. I think Mulholland Drive is a great movie. It's not for everybody, but I do recommend checking it out. Even if you w will never understand it, I don't think any of us will understand the meaning of it. David Lynch will never give us a hint of like what the meaning of this movie is. Well, that's just David Lynch being Lynch. I mean, da being David Lynch. But if you haven't seen Mulholland Drive, I highly recommend it. It is a fantastic movie. And uh, I don't have a lot to say. I don't have much else to say about this movie, but I'm going to give Mulholland Drive a 9 out of 10. Just a fantastic movie, just like uh, Blue Velvet. Well, guys, that wraps up another edition of Keegan's Movie Reviews. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment below, and subscribe for more videos like this. And comment below which movie do you prefer more, Blue Velvet or Mulholland Drive? Which movie do you think is better? Let me know in the comments below. And feel free to follow me on Instagram and Letterboxd. The links are in the description down below. And uh, yeah, guys. So uh, that's about it for the video. So thanks again for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. And until next time, this is Keegan Shepard signing off. Thanks for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.